Spider Impact is the fastest and easiest way to automate your organization's strategy. It's based around the idea that you improve what you measure. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the software by showing you how three different types of people would use it. So if I were a typical employee, I'd want to first quickly glance through this home section that you see when you first log in. Here in alerts, I can see that leads has taken a turn for the worse and I can click to drill down, but I also see that I have some responsibilities over here. I'm responsible for updating three KPIs. I own eight KPIs and I own one task. So let's take a look at my KPIs. If you're using Spider Impact with balanced scorecard language, this is going to be called My Measures, but it's the same thing with just a different name. This is the section that shows you everything you want to keep an eye on. You can click the filter to just show the red ones. Now, keep in mind that I'm already getting alerts the second any of these turn red, but it's nice to have the home section as a place to go to get an overall feel for what you're responsible for and how it's all performing. As a typical employee, the other section I'll probably spend some time in is bookmarks. I can quickly click through the top five or six screens that I really care about and then move on with my day. My first bookmark is our strategy map, where I can see at a glance how my corporate strategy is doing. I can see here that increased revenue is red and that it's down from last month. This sales pipeline dashboard shows how ad clicks goes into leads, then new trials and new customers. Everything's going fine except for new customers, which seem to take a turn for the worse at the end of last year. Here's a sales versus expenses dashboard where I can see everything that feeds into revenue like product, training, and book. And here's the costs, book production costs, product costs. And you can see that Spider Impact is predicting what the values will be in the future. And you can see a 95% confidence interval coming out from the last data point. Down here at the bottom are operating expenses like travel or insurance. Here's an interactive sales dashboard where it's pulling data from a data set. You can filter live to only show results for North America or a particular employee. Here's an interactive dashboard showing the 116,000 solar projects in New York over the last decade. A lot of the action is happening down here in Staten Island and the uh, Long Island zip codes, but if we change a filter like electric utility, it tells a very different story. And it's not all dashboards and strategy maps. Here's a report showing all of the red KPIs so we can see only what's going wrong or we can take a look at this Migrate Servers to the Cloud initiative. Spider Impact is using some pretty advanced algorithms to predict that we'll be 94 days late and about 10% under budget. If we scroll down, we can see the budget spent and percent complete over time. At the very bottom are two scorecard items that we've said are related to this initiative, improve IT effectiveness and net operating profit. As you can see, improve IT effectiveness is not being helped up by this initiative, but net operating profit is. We don't have to take the software's word for it. Let's click the button to see what's going on. As you can see, Spider Impact is doing some real statistics here and it's showing its work. Our migrate servers of the cloud initiative is definitely correlated with an improvement to net operating profit. So that's typical employees. They're going to click through the home and bookmark section to see the performance of the things that they care about. The second type of people using Spider Impact are power users. Rather than clicking through the bookmarks, they're going to dig into the software and visit the actual sections. So we'll start with scorecards. And now for the first time we see the organization selector. Everything in Spider Impact is sorted by organization. For example, finance and marketing will each have their own scorecards, dashboards, and everything else. I'm going to choose the root organization, Mobile World Incorporated. And here's our company's balance scorecard. It's got four perspectives, and you can expand them to see the objectives underneath. Each one of those has measures, and a measure has a goal, and its actual value is tracked over time. The actual value is compared to the goal to get a score, and then those scores are rolled up the tree so you can see if you're accomplishing your overall strategy. Here in the initiative section, we've seen migrate servers to the cloud, but we haven't seen build search engine optimization capability. Looks like things are going great there, but what's really interesting is all of the cost and schedule data is being rolled up from the milestones and tasks underneath. The data set section is great for quickly getting answers from your underlying data. 
This is the device sales data set and it powers a lot of my KPIs and dashboards. So let's do some ad hoc analysis here. You just choose a field you want more information about. Let's say the sales country. And now we can see all sales broken down by country. About half are in the United States, another 23% in the UK. We'll choose another field, this time sales employee. So now we see the sales leader is Isaac Bernhardt, followed by Odell. If you want to apply a filter, just click on it. This will show all of the Australian sales. Uh, these are new totals here. Isaac's at 18.6%. Or we could just filter by employee. Let's say just Holly's sales. Uh, here's her US number and UK number. Now, the data set section is not the best for presenting data. You do that in dashboards and reports, but this is great for ad hoc analysis to answer questions quickly about your underlying data. Most data sets are imported automatically from some system of record, but there are times where the data you want doesn't exist anywhere, and that's where the form section comes in. It allows you to quickly build very simple surveys or mini apps for collecting data from people. In this example, it's a customer management form where we've got a bunch of fake customer data, but I'll search for Peter. Oh, there we go, Peter Visco. And I can see that customer's information really quickly, or I can edit their country because I've marked that field as something I can override. Yeah, Peter's in Canada now. Or like this intern management form that allows me to add extra records to my HR data set because interns aren't in the system of record. You can share these forms just like you can with dashboards and use these forms outside of Spider Impact. The file section is great for storing related items like a document that might be related to a KPI. But you can also have background images for dashboards and strategy maps. Speaking of strategy maps, let's check out the presentation section. So this is the strategy map we've seen before, but just like everything else in Spider Impact, you can click on something to drill down, and it drills you right into the scorecard section to see more info. We know all about the dashboard section by now. Here's one with a business process management infographic. These are all built into Spider Impact. There's a big library that you can choose from for data visualization. Here's call center status. Uh, you can see different performance, but this is a Google map that's been embedded into Spider Impact. And you can do this on a lot of different dashboards. You can embed different third-party data right into the application. In the report section, we're looking at all downward trending measures, not just red measures, but measures that are worse this period than the previous one. And here's a sales summary by employee and country. Looks like Russell's doing great here in the US. We'll cover briefings at the very end. So the last section a power user would visit is charts. Here's that same sales data we've seen before, but now there are reference bands added to show median sales performance by country. And here's a stacked bar chart showing sales broken down by quarter. Looks like things are getting better, but fourth quarter results aren't in yet for 2022. So that's power users. They'll go through the different sections to get exactly what they want. The third type of Spider Impact users are people who never log into the software at all. Maybe on the first of every month, there's an email waiting in my inbox with information about the previous month's sales. Or I see a dashboard embedded in my company's website. Or I use my company's mini app for tracking this summer's interns. Or maybe I'm the CEO at our quarterly executive meeting. This full screen briefing looks a lot like PowerPoint, but it's all live data, which means that we don't have to build a new presentation every quarter, and it's completely interactive. If I've got a question about why our cash on hand is so low, we can click to drill down to the underlying data right there in the briefing. It looks like cash started getting low a few months ago, and our bonds are pretty high right now. And this whole time, there's a notice on the top saying your briefing is paused. Just click to jump right back in and continue your briefing. So that's Spider Impact. It's performance management software that brings your strategy to life.